So one of the biggest tournaments in the US Open Series over for another year. We had some unlikely champions. And when I say unlikely, I mean unlikely final is more like it on the women's side. On the men's side, a very strange win, I guess. But let's go have a look at who actually won the tournaments last week. So starting on the women's side, we had Pagula defending her title in Canada. She won this title last year. This time beating Anissimova in three sets, 6-3, 2-6, to lift her third WTA 1000 trophy. And on the men's side, Alexei Poprin beat Rublev in straight sets, 6-2, 6, two, six four. He also beat Dimitrov and her catch along the way. So he had a massive week, Poprin, and got a big boost in the rankings because of it. All right, let's have a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week over the last week. Sebastian Corder had a really good week this week, just like he did last week. Went up three spots, number 15 in the world, which is a career high for him. Him. And he's joining that pack of Americans like Fritz, Paul, and Shelton. He's right in there with those guys. So America's going strong. Popperin, he also had a massive boost after winning the biggest trophy of his career. He went up 39 spots, number 23 in the world, which is a career high for him. And he will be seated at the US Open as well, which I think might be the first time in a Grand Slam he'll be seated. So huge week for Popperin. And then on the women's side, Anissa Moba making the final of Canada. She went up 83 spots, number 49 in the world, back in the top 50 for the first time in a while after making that final. So some big jumps there for some key players ahead of this US Open. Having a look at the players that went down in the rankings over the last week that are outside the top 10, Samson over. She went down four spots, number 17 in the world after losing points from last year's final of Canada. Gael Monfils, he also went down 12 spots to number 46 in the world after failing to defend the points from last year's tournament. And also for Kina, he had a really good run in Canada last year, but unfortunately couldn't replicate that. And he went down 11 spots, number 53 in the world this week. So some names there that just couldn't get the same run as they had 12 months ago, losing some ranking points and losing some spots in the rankings. All right, so look at the WTA rankings for this week and no change at the top with Sviantec still at number one. Goff coming at number two with Sabalenka at three and Rebecca at four. Palini at five and Pagula, despite winning in Canada, still stays at number six. Zhang comes in at seven. We did have a change at the bottom with Collins dropping two spots down to number 10, making way for Zachary and Krajikova, both who didn't play last week. So Collins losing points and dropping down the rankings, but stays in the top 10 for this week. But she's not playing next week in Cincinnati and the players that are outside of the top 10 are playing. So before the US Open starts, Collins could drop out of the top 10. Just depends on other players and what they do. Having a look at the race of the finals now, and still only one player qualified. That's Iga Sviantec. Officially qualified as well by the WTA. She stays at one with Rebecca at two and Sabalenka at three. Paulini at four and Goff at five. Collins stays there at number six. But Navarro, she goes up four spots into that number seven spot after making the semifinals of Canada last week. Pushing Krajikova down to number eight. Ostapenko stays in at number nine and Zhang drops down to number 10. Pushing Kazakhstan out of the top 10 completely. So having a big run at a semi-final of a 1,000 event really does your wonders, especially down the bottom half of that top eight. So the top players all have thousands of points, but you know a couple hundred points here and there and having a good run at one of these tournaments can get you into that top eight, as we see there with Navarro. Okay, over on the men's rankings now, and no change at the top with Yannick Sinner staying at world number one and Djokovic at number two. Elgris at three and Zverev at four. Medvedev coming at number five. And going into Cincinnati, they could change. So there are some... Sinner can't not be number one, but the other guys are all playing for the other spots, as we'll find out this time next week once they've locked in for the US Open. Bottom half of the top 10, though, we did have some changes with her catch dropping down one spot, making way for Rublev, who went up to number six after making the final of Montreal. Her catch being pushed to number seven with Rude going up a spot to number eight, Dimitrov up to number nine, and Demonor not able to defend the points from last year's Canada. He drops down three spots to number 10, and his top 10 spot is in jeopardy, just like Collins on the women's side. Players just outside the top 10 will be trying to kick him out just before the US Open. So, unfortunately, Dimitrov Dimitrov's injuries are affecting his ranking now, but most of those guys are playing next week in Cincinnati. The big one not playing is Djokovic, of course, and his number two spot is up for grabs for Zverev and Elkraz. So Cincinnati next week is going to be really interesting. Looking at the race of the finals now, and Yannick Sinner finally qualifies. And when I say finally, I mean, he won the Australian Open. He had such a great start to the year. He's actually been pretty good over the last couple of months, despite not winning any massive titles in terms of Grand Slams and compared to Elkaraz. But he did qualify for the finals. So he is the first guy playing in the ADB finals officially. With Elkraz not far behind at number two. Zverev at three and Medvedev at four. Rude comes in at five with Djokovic at six. But we did have a change with Rublev flying back into that top eight. Going up four spots after making the final of Montreal. Pushing Dimonor down to eight. Sidibas down to nine. Fritz down to number 10. And Paul out of the top 10 completely. So, like I said with the ladies, one good week at one of these 1,000 events. Even if you don't win it, can still get you a lot of points at this stage of the season. And put you in to that conversation of maybe qualifying for the ATP finals. So... It's looking really interesting, the ATP Finals. And with Sinner already qualified, there's only seven spots left for the remainder of the season. So there it is. That is the rankings. No major changes. I mean, some changes to the race of the finals, but you'd expect that 
after a 1000 event, especially a 1000 event that a lot of players didn't play because of the Olympics. And remember, the Olympics was worth no points. So what if the Olympics were worth points? That would have been something interesting, but it's not. So we're not going to talk about it. But let me know in the comments below. Who are you missing out of the rankings? Or who do you think should be at the top of the game that you're maybe surprised that isn't there? Because there are some players here and there that maybe have dropped out of the top 10 in recent weeks that haven't gotten back yet. Like Sidzi Pass, for example. He dropped out of the top 10 in recent times and hasn't been able to get back in there. Jabur, of course, dropping out of the top 10 recently as well and is trying to fight back to get in there over the next few weeks. So let me know down in the comments below. Who are you most surprised that is not in those rankings? But going to Cincinnati, the last chance to get some points and some rankings for the US Open.